Today on Commander Replay, we play our very first game with Shram, Senior Edificer, in a one verse one Can Shram live up to the hype of being the new best mono-white commander? Find out next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, so here we go. I just picked up Shram Senior Edificer, and I'm trying to put together the deck list so I can play the very first game with them. Uh, if you'll notice, I'm currently at 151 cards, and this is because of that flexibility that I talked about in that other video. There are so many different cards that I want to play with him, it has been very hard to pare down to an actual 100 card deck. So right now I'm going to keep editing until I get this thing down to 100 cards and can actually uh, start a game up, so I'll uh, check in with you guys then. Alright guys, we are back. I have trimmed this deck list down from 152 cards to a very lean 100. Uh, I had to make so many difficult cuts you guys wouldn't even believe. You could easily make two decks with all of the cards that care about equipment or auras in white. I trimmed a lot of the good stuff style cards, uh, including Sun Titan, Baneslayer Angel, Archangel of Thune, Gisela the Broken Blade, and a handful of others, because I know all of those cards are very good on their own. Uh, right now I want to test out how all of the new cards that I've put into this list will perform. So over time I'll be slotting out things that don't work, and slotting back in my normal quote-unquote white good stuff cards. The white stuff. Of note, I trimmed Land Tax, Tithe, and Gift of Estates. Not something I'm super comfortable doing, but I'm hoping with the constant card draw that we should catch enough lands along the way that we won't really need the land fixing that those provide. That's what I'm hoping for. That remains to be seen. The other big question on my mind is whether these cheaper equipments like Bone Splitter, Dark Steel Axe, and Bone Saw will be effective. But I wonder if we're better off playing only the most important equipments. Uh, I could foresee a case where if Shram or the creature that we're going in on dies, that it could be really expensive to try and re-equip all of these equipments. Uh, I did put Armory Automation in the deck for that reason. It can easily pick up all the equipments and play. You guys can kind of pause and take a look at things. I won't go through every single card here. You notice I don't have all that much at the top end. Four is kind of the top of the curve on this deck. We do have things like Holy Mantle that give us protection from creatures, essentially making us unblockable. We have Nahiri to try to get back some equipments, also to make tokens if we uh, need more bodies in play. Uh, we have Oriok Survivors to return equipments. We have Boon Weaver Giant to return auras or search for auras. And we have Ugin at the top end as a sweeper and all-around good card. Let's see where this list goes. Uh, I'm excited to try out my first game with it. So here we are. I've got the matchmaking open for the first game with Shram. First game! Yeah! Uh, I'm really hoping we don't run into a super competitive deck because I trimmed out a lot of the things that you would want in competitive matches. Sort of the disruption and prison-y components that white tends to play a lot of. I'm also not running any Wrath of Gods. Ugin is really the only mass removal in the deck. Uh, so right now we are all in on the Voltron style plan. And again, this is something that I'm going to switch over time as I figure out which cards are good and which ones just need to come out. We have two lands. This seems keepable. Opponent goes down to five, deciding whether to go to four. So here we are, very first game. Uh, hopefully the game doesn't get weird, hopefully the opponent doesn't mulligan down to zero, because that would just be super awkward. And then I'd have to record another game for you guys. Opponent decides to keep at five, and drops a Mountain Valley, and passes the turn. By the way, we are facing Kahiji Honored One, so probably expecting an Onslaught of Creatures, we'll see how that goes. So we draw an Armored Ascension, uh, kind of would have liked the land right there, but what can you do? So we'll play our planes, and we'll pass the turn. Opponent cracks their Mountain Valley, and finds a Temple Garden. Comes into play tapped. Opponent plays a Gruel Turf. That's going to bounce the Temple Garden. So we miss another land. Was really hoping to catch a land there. Uh, Swords is okay, I guess, but we could really use another Plains. So we play Shram. Again, having a two-mana commander is absolutely awesome. And hopefully next turn we catch a Plains. So Temple Garden for our opponent. Untapped. Ha! <laughs> so Song of the Dryads on our... <laughs> Song of, the, Song of the Dryads on our Shram. It sucks to be you. I know it's true. I don't, there, there's a small handful of ways we can deal with that in this deck, but this game just got a whole lot worse. Oi. Uh, we're at eight cards. Oi. Well, I walked into that trap. All right, so we can't really do anything. I'm just going to pass the turn. I'm going to discard the hand size 
and I'm going to get rid of this arrest. And the opponent just scoops. Awkward. Super awkward. So it looks like we're going to be trying another game. I'm just going to draw out this hand to see what uh, we were actually going to catch. Pure Steel Paladin, not a land. Not a land. Uh, we were a couple turns away from a land. This game is getting really awkward. Opponent probably missed their land drops as well. Who knows? Uh, back to matchmaking. All right, let's try it. Game number two. Second game! Yeah! Hopefully it's way less awkward than our first game, and hopefully we don't get blown out by turn one Sol Ring and a bunch of other nonsense. So this is a good starting hand. We actually have mana this time, so that'll be good. Uh, we have an Ancient Tomb to give us some ramp. Uh, we're going to keep this hand. This Flickering Protection allows gives us protection from a color, but we can also pay one to return it to our hand, which essentially, essentially allows us to turn all of our mana into card draw. So here's the turn one Sol Ring from our opponent that I was hoping we wouldn't run into. So turn one, we're going to drop down a Maria, since we have no other plays. We'll pass the turn. Opponent is playing Thada, Adele, Quisitor. So Thada coming into play. Ah, uh, what to do. So right here, I'm going to play Shram. And if opponent wants to trade, I'll trade. I'd really rather not have them steal a Sol Ring out of our deck or something like that. Also, there's, I think, 12 equipments in this deck list right now. So if he wants to trade, I'll trade all day. And that'll give us time to get back in this game. So we trade. Opponent decides to recast. I would love to see like an arrest or something like that right here. I'm going to drop down this ancient tomb. Uh, I think the best we can do is just, yeah, the best we can do is just replay Shram and just go through the, go through the same play again. And if opponent wants to trade again, I'll trade again. Opponent drops another island. Ah, uh, shit. Ugh. Aquatex will put a flood counter on land. That land becomes an island. Ugh. We're not going to be able to block Thada anymore, and it's going to steal probably some really good things out of our deck. This is not great. Yeah, they have their choice of riches to uh, steal with the Thada right here. I'd like to see an arrest or something like that. Sort of. Uh, it picks up Sword of Fire and Ice, and I assume that'll be coming into play. Sword of Fire and Ice coming down. Open the... Ooh. All right. Open the Armory is an awesome draw. This allows us to go for Dark Steel Mutation and turn Thada into a vegetable. So I think that's the plan we're going on. Gonna hit Ancient Tomb, play this Open the Armory. What are our choices? Got one floating. We can make a total of three mana. So we have a Rest. A Rest is a very good option. That'll prevent attacking or blocking and can't activate abilities. So as much as I like the Dark Steel Mutation, he will still be able to attack with it with the Sword. So I'm going to go for a rest right here. Just throw that on. That'll prevent him from attacking or blocking. He'll have to find more creatures or ways to essentially bounce Thada before he'll be able to do anything with the sword again. So Cracker Flooded Strand. Let's go find find a planes. And we're going to put an arrest on Thada. Arrested! We get to draw a card off Shram's ability. It's the first time we've gotten the draw. Very exciting. We pick up a Myriad Landscape. So opponent Thada is now a vegetable. Vegetable! We're going to go to combat and get in some damage. Uh, right now, our lands are awkward, so this Armored Ascension isn't going to do a ton for us, but as the game goes on, this should get much better. A Pentrock Ward and Flickering Ward should be able to do a ton for us. Opponent plays a Force Field. Next time an unblocked creature of your choice would deal combat damage to you, prevent all but one of that damage. Oi. Well, it's going to make things complicated. Okay, what to do this turn? Uh, Duelist Heritage might help. That'll at least allow us to get in a little bit of damage on each swing. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to lay down this Flickering Ward. We'll get the card draw, see if we pick up anything good. Pick up a Pure Steel Paladin. It's okay. We don't have any equipments yet, but could come in handy in the future. Uh, we are going to choose blue, so Shram now has protection from blue. It's going to be pretty difficult for them to deal with Shram, at least with targeted removal. Cyclonic Rift is always a concern. What is this? Oh! How about that upgrade on Magic Online that shows how much commander damage you've taken now? That's pretty cool. Thank you, Magic Online, for making our gaming experience a more pleasant one. Uh, what to do next? So right here, I want to... I need white mana. I'm going to throw down the command tower. Uh, I'm going to play... I don't really want the redundant uh, protection from blue. Uh, the card draw would be nice. The card draw would be really nice, but if for some reason Shram gets bounced off of a mass bounce spell, I want to have the protection ability still available to us. Um, so I want to, I'm going to hold off on this Pentarch Ward for now. Well, yeah, we totally could have played the Myriad Landscape this turn. Whatever. So, that's a mistake. Hopefully that doesn't bite us. How about this, though? We're at six cards in hand, and the Mono Blue opponent is at three cards in hand. <laughs> When's the last time you've seen that? So, we're going to use Double Strike off the Duelist Heritage. Opponent activates Force Field. Opponent cuts our damage in half with the Force Field. Uh, so yeah, our mana's a bit awkward here. We can't play the Pure Steel... Can we? 
Oh, we can't play the Pure Steel Paladin. Okay, we'll play the Pure Steel Paladin right here. That seems fine. Uh, so it becomes an island in addition to becoming a plane, so that is relevant. That gives us one, two... We have two planes in play, so Armored Ascension isn't doing a ton yet. This force field will be super annoying. Uh, we're getting to a point now where we're just probably going to... We're going to want to try to cycle through as many cards in our deck as we can and find some artifact removal for the force field, possibly blow up our sword in the process. That got equipped to the Thada. Ew, that's not great. Opponent is coming in with the... They've activated Fairy Conclave. They're going to equip the sword. They're going to mess us up pretty good right here. They get their pick if they want to blow up either Shram or the Pure Steel Paladin. We are not going to give our opponent's creature double strike. Gets a sword trigger. And he's going to blow up Shram. That sucks. Opponent taps out for a Quicksilver Fountain. Eh, that's not spectacular. It's going to slowly turn all of our lands into islands. Ugh. Uh, I'm going to turn the Ancient Tomb into an island. Ooh. That is good news. Enlightened Tutor gives us ac access to, like, 50 cards in our deck. It's insane. Uh, the question is what to go for. Really, I want something to blow up these artifacts. These artifacts are going to become really problematic. So I really want to get this Ghostly Prison down. That's going to give the opponent some trouble to activate Fairy Conclave and equip the sword all in the same turn. Uh, so this turn we'll lay down the Myriad Landscape. Uh, we'll swing in with the Pure Steel Paladin. Hopefully the Quicksilver Fountain turns the Fairy Conclave... Actually, yeah, I think that the Quicksilver Fountain will turn the Fairy Conclave into an island, so they shouldn't be able to activate it this turn. We'll see how that goes. So, Fairy Conclave becomes an island. Okay, so, uh, maybe Ghostly Prison wasn't the best play there. Opponent drops another land. They're tapping out. They're playing something big. Ah! Opponent's gonna confiscate our Pure Steel Paladin. That's not awesome. So, end step, we're gonna use this Enlightened Tutor. And what to search for. I mean, Aura of Silence is a good choice. I'm going to go with the Seal of Cleansing just because it's less white mana. Yeah, I like Seal of Cleansing right here. So, our turn. We're going to lose another land. I will choose the Command Tower. If you guys are wondering why Command Tower is in this deck, I started the frame of this deck from another deck, my Aurelia deck, that uh, was red and white. So, I can actually take out that Command Tower and just replace it with the planes. So, we pick up our Seal of Cleansing. We have a Command Beacon. Hmm. Man, Shram is six to cast now. That's pretty rough. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna think I'm gonna sack the command beacon. I think the answer here is just gonna be to get him in play and keep drawing cards. So I'm gonna put the armored ascension on him. We draw an imperial plate. I can't decide if I if I want to blow up the sword or the force field. Uh, Quicksilver is also pretty annoying, but if we let it go long enough, it'll remove all the counters. Ha! The opponent, uh, the opponent put Sword of Fire and Ice on the uh, Pure Steel Paladin, and the protection from blue made Confiscate no longer a legal target for a Pure Steel Paladin, so Pure Steel Paladin's back on our control now. <laughs> that's, uh, that's an awesome play. <laughs> you don't see that come up too much. In, in rare circumstances, I have forgotten about that as well, where the, the sword gives you protection from a color, and you have an aura. Uh, of that color on the creature, so that worked out super awesome for us. So right now, after this turn, we will have two non-island cards left. Actually, so I'm torn between sacking the Myriad Landscape here and just losing, and that'll give us two additional planes. I can't, uh, maybe it's worth letting the Quicksilver Fountain reset. It will take a while, but I think it'll be worth it. Okay, so first thing we do is cast this Bone Saw, get a free card draw. So it's a good thing we saved that Seal of Cleansing. That allowed our opponent to uh, make a nice blunder. Ooh, we get a second card draw. We get a second card draw off the uh, Pure Steel Paladin. All the value. So now we've got Battle Mastery. I'm going to hold on to this Plains because I, wanna, I want Quicksilver Fountain to reset. And playing more lands will just make it take longer. We will play Imperial Plate. Get two card draws. One off Shram. And then the next off of Pure Steel Paladin. Ooh, a Steel Shaper's Gift. Nice. So Inquisitor's Flail. Draw two more cards. So, Pure Steel Paladin is absolutely bonkers in this deck, because we're just going to draw through our deck now. Uh, we need... Yeah, this will give us Metalcraft, so we'll be able to equip everything for free. There's an Angelic Destiny, and we can't cast it yet, but in a turn or two, that could be really good. So, draw more cards. Got Shielded by Faith. An opponent scoops. Nice. So there it is. The, the first game, nothing really interesting happened. The second game, uh, I played a little bit loose. My, my lines of play weren't spectacular, but Shram was strong enough to get us there. How about that? 
The uh, the mono white deck with a full seven in hand, while the mono blue decks only got two. So I hope you guys enjoyed these first games with Shram. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what card choices you would make in the deck. And of course, if you like this video, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching.